it. So, <laughs> so this is old cow. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the luck of the Irish. Yeah, <laughs> of my grandmother would say St. Pat's Day, not St. Patrick, but St. Pat's. Oh, so you're very Irish. I mean, I can shift into that now if it is I choose mm -hmm. because uh, I spent more time as a child with my grandmother than I did with my mother and father. So, oh, you did? Well, because I was I was born like about this, and my grandmother was a doctor, so ah. so I spent a lot of time with her. So I didn't pick up her again. And she had really had strong. <laughs> she did. Oh God, yes. I, mean, mm. I used to under, I used to be able to cuss and and get it, but I, uh, I I had that soaked out of my mouth. <laughs> my mother did not like it. Well, one of the things for certain that you can always expect on St. Patrick's Day or St. Pat's Day. Irish coffee. <laughs> And lots of Irish beer. Yeah. And lots of green. And. Ah. And brisket. Ah, yes. So, but, uh, but, which is funny that when you think about it, so like, uh, it says, is known as the patron saint of Ireland. True, he was not born Irish, he but he became an Irish. integral part of the Irish heritage, mostly through a service across the uh, uh, Ireland in the fifth century. Mm. Uh, Patrick was born in the later half of the 4th century AD, that's after Dominion, that's after God, after Christ was oh. killed. There are differing views about the exact year and place of his birth. Um, he was born 390, while another said it was 473. It's basically, he was either born in Scotland or Roman England, or maybe even um, in uh, Rome itself. Uh, his real name was probably Mawasukat, although Patrici Patricius was his Romanized name and he was later can be known as Patrick. See he had a he had a Roman name. He had a he had a patrician Roman name. He did. Which would then tend to make you think he was not from England. Ah I mean, he could have been born in Roman England, but it's not likely with the name like uh, you know the uh, like uh, Patricius. That is no, pure Roman. That, that's pure Roman, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I said he was uh, the son of uh, Capernus, a Roman army A Roman officer. British army officer. Yeah. And he was growing up and actually had other kids basically. One day a band of pirates landed in South Wales and kidnapped his boy along with many others. They sold him to the slavery in Ireland. Uh, there, were, there he was for six years, mostly in prison. This came, there's where the changes came about. He was dreamed of having seen God and he was dictated by God to get away from the Irish, I mean, first of all, we can tell you there's a bit of a, a bit of an Irish lie right there. What? He was the son of a high-ranking Roman officer. He was. They would not have ever let that go by. Ah. They'd have torn Ireland apart looking for the sun. Did so something happen? There's a little bit of a Balarney right off the bat. <laughs> so that's what they call plain out lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, he did escape, and he went to Britain, then to France. And there he joined a monastery and studied under Saint Germain, the Bishop of Auxerre. Auxerre. Okay, he spent around 12 years in training, and when he became a bishop, he dreamed that the Irish were calling him back to Ireland to tell him about God. The confession, Patrick. The, the confessio. Oh, the confessio. Patrick's spiritual autobiography is the most important document regarding this, and it tells a dream after his return to Britain, in which one victorious delivered him a letter headed the voice of the Irish. I know, basically he was for the Bellarney folks. <laughs> That's what they call it, the Bellarney. I know, but he set out for Ireland with the Pope's blessing. Then he converted the, Irish, the Gaelic Irish, who were then mostly pagan to Christianity. He was confident in the Lord. He journeyed far and wide, baptizing and farming with the old tiring zeal. And in a diplomatic fashion, he brought gifts to a kinglet here and a lawyer there, but accepted none for himself, which is not what the church did at that time. They accepted many gifts, which is why that Vatican has got so many things in its treasury. It really does. In all the churches. I know. And, and You know, I sometimes think they, they made up that tithing thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you could get the pick the pockets. No, but you're going to go. We're going to go try. One of which there, when when the Democrats in the United States are saying, God, you know, uh, you know, uh, Christ approved of paying taxes and it, and it approved of the wealthy paying more. You no, know, specifically no. from the Bible, it says, "Give render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God." 
It didn't say anything about soaking the rich. Nope. So they, they were equal opportunity taxers in Rome, folks. They got everybody. Whether you be young, be old, be rich, or... It was equal opportunity? They got everybody. Ah. I said, indeed, Patrick was quite a success for the winning converts. Though active preaching, he made important converts even among the royal families. Well, because he was a member of them, folks. Mm -hmm. at, the, uh, at this fact, upset the Celtic Druid. Patrick was arrested several times, but escaped each time. For 20 years, he had traveled to a, throughout Ireland, established monasteries across the country. He also set up schools and churches which would aid him in his conversion. He developed a native clergy, fostered the growth of monetism, established dioceses, and held church councils. It sounds like St. Francis of Assisi. Or, it really uh, does. Or, or the Franciscan monk that created all the, uh, Bruno, Bruno, Bruno Sierra that created all of the churches across the Southwest. Really? Yep. Well, Patrick's doctrine is considered orthodox and has been interpreted as anti-Pelagian. I don't even know what that that's, is. Pelagian? That, that's called, that, that, the word is pagan. Ah, pagan. Although he's not particularly noted as a man of learning. In other words, they didn't know if he was a learned man. <laughs> a few of his remindings remain extant. His, his confessio replied to the de detractors in several letters. He wrote a bloody book, folks. I mean, he wrote I thought he a did book. A he wrote a book 1,700 years ago. He wrote a book. Which actually, at the time, there weren't that many people writing. And he wrote a book. And the Lorica, or Breastplate, the famous hymn attributed to Patrick, may date to a later period. But by the end of the 7th century, Patrick had become a legendary figure, and the legends have con continued to grow since then. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are many legends associated with St. Patrick. It is said that uh, he used the three-day shamrock to explain the concept of Trinity. Which refers to the combination of Father, Son, and, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Ghost. Holy Spirit, they call it here. And the Holy Spirit. Hence, his strong association with his day and his name. Legend is also said that St. Patrick had put the curse of God upon venomous snakes in Ireland and drove all the snakes into the sea where they drowned. There were never any snakes in Ireland. Mm. There were serpents, but there were never any snakes in Ireland. Mm. And why happened to be serpents? Because there were sea serpents and there were dinosaurs and there were fire breathing dragons. But there were never any vipers. But true, these are mostly legends. But after some fifteen hundred years, these legends have been become inseparably combined with the facts. In other words, they don't know really what's fact or fiction. No, there's a there's a there is a thing. If you're a journalist, you understand when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. Mm -hmm. So they don't care about fact because the legend is where the money comes from. Mm. See, they have helped us uh, know much about the saint and the spirit behind celebration today. Patrick's mission in Ireland lasted for over 20 years. He died on March 17, uh, 461. That day has been commemorated as St. Patrick's Day ever since. Um, the day's spirit is to celebrate the universal baptism of Ireland. Though originally a Catholic holiday, St. Patrick's has evolved into a more secular holiday or simply an Irish day, basically. Irish coffee, mm -hmm. an Irish beer, an Irish celebration. It's not a bad person. I'm, I can do. <laughs> I can do an Irish shit. So. <laughs> His grandmother was Irish. Oh, that. She was very Irish. Stella Bergoon. So. <laughs> My grandma was half Irish. Oh, yeah. She got this little Irish Asian girl over there. Yeah. You know. My grandma, she was my step-grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, an Irish has become born as is part of our national tradition, is everywhere they populated and prospered. The Irish were everywhere, folks. I mean, mm -hmm. they basically, the mix, they basically went everywhere. Watch, even on Star Trek, you see the Irish in outer space. And they're all the same Irish, the same drinking too much, the same partying too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and as they do, the Catholic feast day, for the most part, love of Irish saints has become a holiday and celebration of the Irish and Irish culture. Oh, we got a leprechaun or the little Ooh. people. Oh, we like the little, or the menahunis if you're in Hawaii. Mm. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. That's how the Irish say Is that Hawaii. what it is? So, um, they also, you know, refer to as Daniel Boone as Davit. Um, you know, when they go, David, David Boone, I know. 
they can also go. When I shines are shining, when I shines are blue, when I shines are shining, they're shining down on you. See, he's got the voice. Bad. That was pretty good. I know. But uh, it is fitting this holiday should fall at the time of year when the return of spring begins to seem at hand. But that's why icons like the green color, the trilly shamrock, the leprechaun, or the pot of gold, and the Balarney oh, stone, the Balarney stone, because we're all full of it. I'm actually more full than normal because I've been drinking this for all day. Ah, so they just think of it as a night celebration of the Irish. And for you people that don't believe it's Irish coffee, did an Irishman make it? Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> I know, but um, all came to associate with a celebration of day, and what do they all mean? No, because there is no real meaning behind Wait, did it. They, was there ever like a meaning like you wear no. green? No, I, I you it's pinch just the people that you don't the wear people green. That don't wear green. So I think that was just an excuse to pinch people. It, it was also an excuse, to, actually, there was an excuse to pinch attractive young ladies. That was the whole bit because they did the, the Irish were not the Irish were not quite as forward as the Italians. Ah. But uh, so they celebrated the holiday so they could all pinch each other. But if you li listen, how many members? Okay, look look at where the Irish are. Irish tend to be union people. They tend to be Irish politicians. They tend to be barkeeps. They tend to be. Um, uh, they tend to uh, you know to be farmers, especially potato farmers. So the Did Irish. Did we get our potatoes from Ireland? We, we, all the potatoes, okay, here's the way it works is the potatoes came from Ireland. There was a massive blight in Ireland, and the potatoes that they brought to the United States went back to Ireland to re, reconfigure the potatoes in Ireland. It's the same thing as most people understand. Most of the grapevines in, in France come from the United States, not from France because there was a big blight that took the vines out. Oh, really? So the vines that they use, our vines are on their stock, and they basically. That I'll say, see, our potatoes came from Ireland, and the Irish, when they had the Great Potato Famine, it's actually uh, my grandmother came here before the Great Potato Famine, and she did. She had intention to go back with her husband, uh, but the problem was is that they they were coming here, mm. and there was a big business, and <laughs> the Irish tended to celebrate where the Irish were, and they tended to want Irish medical people to treat their people. They did not trust others, so. But that's, you know, that's how it goes. I mean, my, 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 my family very proud of the fact that they are baboons. Mm -hmm. But uh, they also, you know, they also, uh, they also took, anybody knows that Danny Boy, for instance, is, uh, is uh, basically, it's, a, it's another pretty bar song, actually. They go like, but, Oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are blowing from hill and dale. You hear them blowing so. You hear them blowing for you softly. They're blowing for you, Danny Boy. Oh, Danny Boy. Basically, it's forest green. No, it's not. It's all washed out. It's forest green. It's a stupid Ryder Cup hat. It's a, you know, so until next time, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chick. Happy St. Patrick's Day! <laughs>